Hey guys, Tracy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of the main differences between Shopify versus WooCommerce when it comes to building your e-commerce store. So whether you're just getting started off building a store, or maybe you've tried building one in the past, or you already have a website and you're looking to pair that with an e-commerce store, this video should help clear up anything confusing about the two so that you can really decide which is best for you. So let's just get right into it. On the front end, one of the big things that you'll notice between Shopify versus WooCommerce is that Shopify requires a monthly plan. So what happens is you can actually get a 14 day free trial, but after that trial, you do have to commit to a minimum of $29 a month to use their platform. Whereas WooCommerce, one of the biggest differences is, is that it's not actually a platform or service itself. It's really just the plugin that you use with your WordPress site. And so the plugin itself is free, and doesn't require any monthly plan. Now, one thing with Shopify is that their monthly plan does already include the hosting for your website. So even though WooCommerce is a free plugin, you still will need to go purchase some hosting for your site. But the best part is, is that you can get hosting for as little as, 395 to get started. And so as you scale your store, you add more products, you have more traffic, you can then do a bigger hosting plan as you need it. But in the beginning, most people are fine with the lower end hosting plans through sites like SiteGround, uh, and we use A2 hosting ourselves. And then with both of them, Shopify and WooCommerce, you have to purchase your domain. Shopify does include a free uh, subdomain, so you could use the you know, subdomain.myshopify.com. But if you're really looking to build something professionally, then you are going to want to make sure you purchase a, dom a domain. And I believe if you purchase it through Shopify, it's anywhere from 12 to $14. It may be a little less now, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but if you purchase it outside of it through something like Namecheap, it's typically about $10. And I know with Namecheap, they already include the who is um, name guard, which means that when people were to look up your URL, they won't see your private information about that on the back end. So that's a really cool feature. If you are looking for a place to buy a domain, Namecheap includes that with their um, $10 price. Okay, and now something else that they both have in common actually is that they both have a fair amount of free and paid themes that you can use. Um, I've found that with both of them, the paid themes typically are better. They obviously have a lot more features. They have a lot more opportunities to customize. And so with that, if you are looking to really build a brand, you likely are going to get a paid theme for either one of them. And the prices can range, you know, anywhere from probably $20 and up depending on what you're getting. And so again, with both of those, if you were on a strict budget and you didn't want to invest in a theme out right out the gate, you are able to get free themes with both of these, um, with both of these options. Okay, and now this next thing is probably one of the biggest differences um, between the two platforms, and that is the apps that you can install. So with Shopify, they're called apps, and with WooCommerce, they're called plugins. But essentially, they both do similar things, which is they allow you to add in new features, you know, different things that you wanna to do to make your store different. If you wanted to add things that allow you to optimize your store for conversions, there's literally just hundreds and hundreds of apps out there for both of the um, both of these services. But the big difference here is that Shopify, in most cases, requires that you have a monthly plan on a lot of their paid apps, which means that you're then committed to paying that every month if you wanna to continue to use those features. And so that was something that I found added up really quickly for us when we started on a $29 plan, then we needed to upgrade to the $79 plan because we really wanted access to all of the um, reporting and analytics. You only get that when you're on the $79 plan with Shopify. Uh, whereas WooCommerce, we have all the analytics already built in. You can see all your stats. Uh, both of them you can attach to Google Analytics to see your stats as well but WooCommerce did not require any kind of monthly plan in order to access that feature. And another thing I remember with Shopify was that if we ever wanted to add certain apps, we had to also add in some kind of shipping add-on that costed another $20 a month as well. And so we just found that the more we were optimizing our store for bigger traffic and bigger results, the more apps we were having to get and we were tied down to those apps, we had to commit to those monthly plans. 
Now with WooCommerce, since they're plugins, a lot of the time, what happens is that you actually just purchase the plugin one time, which means now you own that plugin, you have the license for it, you can install it on your store. And one of the benefits of this is not just that you don't have a monthly payment for that plugin, but also if you ever decide to start a new store or you know just start things over, you're able to bring that plugin to another domain. You're able to release it from your current store and use it on another store. And I will tell you, when you're getting started in e-commerce, it's likely that you might go through a few stores as you're testing products, especially if you're building very specific niche stores. If you end up testing it and you don't, you don't get any results, you don't get any traction, you scrap the whole idea and you really want to start a whole new store. Well, with Shopify, all your apps are tied to your other store. So you would literally have to start a new account with them and get all the apps again. And really, it's just a big headache. You don't get to bring any of that with you. And so that was also something that we did not like because we've done a, we've had to do a lot of testing with stores and niches and one product to stores. And so with WooCommerce, we own all of these plugins we're buying and we're able to bring them over. Another thing is a lot of times with WooCommerce plugins, you can get things like five site deals. So if you pay a little bit more, you're able to actually then use that plugin on up to five sites, which is really useful if you're someone that's scaling businesses and building out multiple e-commerce stores. It's, it makes it so easy to be able to get nice group deals for all the stuff that you need. Okay, another really big difference is the level of customization. Now I know Shopify does have a lot of options to really customize your store now and make it look nice. But again, at the end of the day, a lot of those re rely on bringing in outside apps, which then cost you more money monthly. And so with that, uh, WordPress on the other hand is built really for customization. So if you even have any bit of technical skills, if you've already been building a WordPress site anyways, then you probably are fine with using WooCommerce because you're already comfortable with the back end of WordPress itself. And that's really all it is, is since WooCommerce is just a plugin, if you're already used to WordPress, it's not a really big shift to start learning WooCommerce. In the beginning, I honestly put it off for a long time because it just, it seems so different from Shopify. I was so used to just being able to, you know, boom, 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 follow the steps because Shopify walks you through. And so when we got to WooCommerce, it was kind of like, you know, yikes, there was not really any training out there. And I guess that's definitely one of the pitfalls of WooCommerce is there's not really as much public training. There's not as many YouTube videos. There's not many, any tutorials on that subject. And so with that, it did take a little bit more digging to really learn everything we needed to. But I can promise you that for us, it absolutely was worth it. And obviously, if you can't tell by now, in all transparency, we we use WooCommerce. That is our chosen platform. And so we wanted something that we would have, you know, that more control over when it comes to that customization factor, really being able to edit and fix any aspect of our site. Because with most WooCommerce themes, I mean, most WordPress themes, you're actually able to, you know, pull up your site and edit what you see is what you get right live in front of you. And so I really, really liked that aspect. I like the fact that there's just so many themes and so many things you can do with it. Um, WooCommerce really integrates with pretty much any WordPress theme you're using. And there's certain themes that are better than others, depending on the types of stores that you're building. But definitely um, a big, big factor for us. In addition to the customization factor, since WooCommerce is a plugin for WordPress and WordPress is built for blogging, um, it's really beneficial if you're looking to build a site that's going to get organic traffic on Google. I would consider looking into WooCommerce just for the fact that you can go deeper into the metadata and all of that good stuff to really let the search engines know what's on your site, the products you're selling, all that good stuff so you can really help yourself rank in the search engines. Now, there are obviously tons of Shopify stores that rank on page one as well. And you know, with the right optimization and keywords, that's absolutely possible. But if you're looking to build a big brand and you wanna be blogging a lot to drive traffic and really leveraging SEO and keywords, then I would suggest looking at the WooCommerce side for that. And actually what you'll see right now is a lot of people obviously are always just talking about Facebook, Facebook, Facebook when it comes to promoting your store. Um, but the reality is a lot of people are missing out on free traffic from Google because nobody's putting the time into optimizing 
their listings to rank. They're simply just going out there and driving traffic. And here's a little hint, okay? If you're already doing this, if you're spending a lot of money driving traffic to your product pages, then your best bet that you could do is to actually optimize those pages ahead of time because as you're driving traffic, it's sending social signals and it's literally telling Google that this is a page that people are liking, you will naturally see your site move up in the ranks of Google simply because it's optimized and you're driving traffic to it. Those two things really help Google know that that's a site to move up in regards to that particular keyword and that product. And so with that, definitely, if you're looking to start really getting onto Google, I would suggest looking into WooCommerce for that aspect. Okay, and the final thing, and this again, this was really the biggest reason we made the switch from Shopify to WooCommerce. It's the reason we've switched from a lot of platforms where they were controlled from other people to now we maintain the control. So with Shopify, you're using their platform. Everything you upload on that site technically belongs to them at that point. All the images you're uploading, all of the posts you're writing, all the products you're doing, that is data that they own. At any moment, they can decide to just turn it off. They can decide to just shut your store off or you know block access to it. They can do whatever they want. And I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but I'm saying that it can happen. And I've seen it happen with a lot of big stores, whether it was because they had issues with Shopify or maybe they had some issues with chargebacks or maybe they accidentally uploaded a product they weren't supposed to upload and you know Shopify didn't let them, you know, they shut their store down, whatever it is, um, at the end of the day, at any moment, they can do that. It's, it's up to them. And so if you want to really be the person who controls your store, controls your data, have the ability to move your, you know, your store, your data, wherever it is you want. If you ever want to move it to a new host, a new domain, any of that stuff, then I highly suggest WooCommerce because you're in control of it at that point. You don't have to worry about anyone flipping a switch at any moment and turning your store off on you. So those are really the biggest differences that I see between Shopify and WooCommerce. I will say that Yes, WooCommerce does require some more technical aspects. Yes, Shopify, you know, they're they're built for e-commerce. They're really, you know, ramping up their features and, and all of that good stuff. But um, when it comes down to it, you need to decide what's most important for you. So if you really don't have any technical skills at all, you've never blogged, you've never built WordPress, then yes, I would suggest getting started with Shopify, really get comfortable with e-commerce, get comfortable using the platform and learning how to do everything. And if you start to have a store that you know, starts to really grow and you ever want to make that shift and, and learn the technical aspects or outsource it to someone so that you can own that store, then that's what I would suggest. Now in regards to WooCommerce, if you already have a website, if you're already running WordPress and you're just looking to maybe pair an e-commerce site to the site you're already running, or you know, you're just already technical and you want to just get right into it, then I would suggest WooCommerce. Um, just because like I said, you really only have those first upfront costs with the domain and then you have a really low end um, price for your monthly hosting. And then you have your one-time fees for most of the plugins. And so for me, that is why we ended up choosing WooCommerce as our home for e-commerce. Um, Oh, and one more big thing, I did leave this out. Shopify, if you decide to use another merchant, um, another merchant provider, if you don't use Shopify payments, they do charge you an additional 2% on top of what they already charge. And so um, if that's something that, you know, if you are needing to use another merchant, I know some people might be in industries that require other merchants. Technically, if you're in drop shipping, you should be using a high risk merchant because it is considered a high risk industry. And so, yeah, if you're looking to use your own merchant provider, then again, just factor in that Shopify will charge you uh, an additional 2% per transaction. Uh, in addition to their monthly fees, whereas WooCommerce, you just integrate your processor and there's no additional fees after that. So those are the big differences. Uh, make sure if you are someone who's looking to build with WooCommerce, then be sure to subscribe to this channel because we're going to be releasing a lot more tutorials on exactly how to set it up since we know there's not much out there right now to really help you get started. 
Uh, and even if you are doing Shopify, be sure to hit subscribe because in addition to teaching you the ins and outs of WooCommerce, we will be going over traffic strategies and optimization strategies that you can really use for either of the platforms. So with that, I will see you on the next video.